Continue. <laughs> Judy began to the point she will be speaking on a topic and determine its general spe specific purposes. She will organize a speech in a manner and best achieves those purposes. She will ensure a beginning, body, and conclusion reinforce the purposes. If it projects sincerity, conviction, control any nervousness, she may fail. And she's going to strive not to use notes. And she'll do this in a remarkably short period of five to seven minutes. Okay. Add phrases or sound bites into your speech that are worth repeating and make your presentation more memorable. When your audience gasps, laughs, or cries, you know you've conjured a powerful message that will be remembered. Sound bites can be solemn, bold, humorous, or direct, but they are always memorable. Please welcome Toastmaster Judy Joffe and her speech. Put some bite into your speech. Sound bites encircle us like surround sound. We hear them and use them every single day. They're phrases that make us memorable. They conjure up vivid, imagery, and they are repeatable. But there's a skill to having a sound bite. You have to make them epigrammic. That means precise, witty, pithy. Now, I could use any one of those three words, but epigrammatic is so much fun to use, and it just rolls off the tongue. Say it with me. Epigrammatic. 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 epigrammatic word to use. What it really wants you to do to create a memorable soundbite is to take some key messages from your presentation and condense them down to just a few succinct words that convey your message. Mark Twain said, minimum of sound, maximum of sense. Now to get us in the frame of mind, I want to play a little activity and game with you. I'm going to name a movie. You're going to tell me a sound bite or something that made that movie memorable. Let's start with Gone with the Wind. Frank Lee. Frank Lee. Okay. Oh, oh, my dear. Anyone else remember another quote from that? I'll never be hungry again. Yes, great one. The one I like is if you have courage, you don't need a reputation. Or the other one is, you still think you're the cutest thing in shoe leather. <laughs> All right, let's go to another one. Terminator. I'll be, I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. better How can we not remember that one? Mm -hmm. Forrest Gump is loaded like a baked potato with all kinds of memorable things. Give me something from Forrest Gump. Life is like Life a box, box of chocolates. chocolates. Right. Life is like a box full of chocolates. Another one. That's all I had to say about that. <laughs> okay, right? Stupid is as stupid does. Run, Forrest, run. Run, Forrest, run. Run like the wind blows. These are all images that conjure up and we remember. What about, let's see, another movie, Rocky. That's pretty explosive. Can you remember any quotes from the movie Rocky? Adrian. Adrian. No. Yo, Adrian. Yo. There's another one. He has some very deep thoughts in it. Every champion was once a contender who refused to give up. The only respect that matters is self-respect. You, me, nobody is going to hit as hard as life. One more. Dirty Harry. Do you feel lucky? Or make my day, punk. Right. Or, do you feel lucky today, punk? Well, do you? All right. Well, tonight, I am Joffy, Toastmaster Joffy. <laughs> and I have seven, zero, zero, double seven tips to share with you. But I'm only going to give you three tonight. They are going to be for your eyes only, and the 
These are three diamonds that you will use forever. The first one is analogies. Now, if you remember back to your competent communications, we had a lesson on how to use words like simile and metaphors, alliteration, onomatopoeia, and all those other good things. Well, analogies take two unsimilar things and compare them together. They create that vivid imagery that you want. Sly as a fox, as a simile. Brave as a lion. Fast as a jackrabbit. The clue for a simile is that it has as or like in it. Didn't we just find a movie quote that had a simile in it? Forrest Gump. Life is like a box full of chocolates. So those are what help make it memorable. A metaphor is an implied one, is an implied comparison of two things. I'm an early bird. You're a night owl. We're a different species. The pen is the weapon of a writer. That's a metaphor. It's taking two different thoughts and putting them together and making it interesting and vivid. Your second one, bold. Bold expressions. You heard that. Terminator, make my day, I'll be back. Those are bold expressions. You need to cultivate a culture of boldness when you speak. Now, we don't typically like to do this because boldness, we could be wrong. We tend to use weasel words. Weasel words suck the life out of your speech. They're like a weasel that eats an egg, sucks the egg out, and leaves the empty shell. Advertising uses weasel words all the time because it makes you think that you want something, but it really doesn't give you any opinion. Like Colgate combats bacteria. Yeah, combats bacteria, but does it cure it? No, it sends you off on another path. You're already excited. I want Colgate because it combats bacteria. But suppose it fails. I could come with you on Saturday night, unless I get a better offer. <laughs> See, it's a weasel word. You want to say bold expressions. It cures bacteria. It fights back. No, that's a weasel word. Fights. It cures bacteria. It solves it. I will come with you on Saturday night. Be bold. Bold expressions make you a leader. They are perceived as leaders. Our third gem is an emotional or inspirational speech. That takes a phrase. It's like the feelings of a mind. The feelings of the mind are like the physical sensations in your body. They create something that stir an emotion in you. Like the movie Rocky, it said, you're only a failure if you don't get up. It inspired us. If you have nothing to live for, you have nothing to die for. So these are expressions that conjure up these emotional feelings within them. Now, you don't want to use just one technique in your speech. You want to use a variety. I've got four more that I'm going to save for another speech. But those are three things that I hope you'll use moving forward. They all create vivid imagery. They all are succinct. They help you create a memorable speech. Steve Jobs said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. It takes an issue boils it down to its essence so that we can all understand and see it. So on your next speech, go forth and create your next memorable sound bite.